What's good, YouTube? Lethal, and today I'm reacting to Goku vs. Saitama. Has everything changed by Seth the programmer? I'm gonna leave the video link down below. You feel me? And um, I still feel I, I feel like Goku beat Saitama simply off of the things we've seen Goku do. You feel me? And the most impressive thing Saitama has done, uh, in the manga, spoiler, you feel me? When he sneezed, he he uh separated the gas planet Jupiter, you feel me? With th that's the most impressive thing that he's done so far. But like like let's be honest, it's a gas planet, you feel me? Like like I'm positive Goku can do the same thing if we want to be honest with you. But you feel me, people's only argument that Saitama can be A1 is that he's a gag character. But I feel like if we're going to be if we're going to be doing a battle between characters in different versus like it's like plot points that like that's like for the that's like for the story they really shouldn't matter you feel me because like 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 i don't know how to explain it but yeah let's 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 this genius do all, all the talking you feel me june 5th 2021 I uploaded Goku versus Saitama, I The that. Honest Truth, I forgot which what you said, I gave my honest opinion on the scaling of Goku and Saitama, and compared but, them, and what I thought of then. the entire argument, and Saitama has to. we went over Saitama being an endgame level protag at the start of his story, and how he had a lot more to show us in the future. The conclusion of that video was that, unfortunately, at the time, Saitama had not shown enough for us to really concretely say, for 100% certainty, what his maximum strength was and goku at the moment had shown more powerful things but oh a... but yeah garon uh i don't know how 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 he about to scale him but garon was low-key insane with, with his with his stuff right? the writing of this video on august 15th 2022 saitama has in fact shown his true strength against an opponent known as cosmic fear garo this is the manga adaptation of the webcomic battle, but now with massively higher feats, scaling, lore, implications, and so on than the original. So, to answer the title of this video, yes, everything has in fact changed. I don't remember if he I said Goku or this video the video is one. I'm not making this a dunk on any fandom well, or be too that, crazy with this update video. So. These days it seems like I'm kind of in everyone's head when it comes to Goku versus Saitama and whether it's people that love my opinion or even despise it. It seems they both equally want to hear what I have to say about the new chapters of One Punch Man and how it applies to my previous work. What is this picture? Some people even going as so far as to say that me not talking about it is a huge problem. I think the most titanic change to the debate at the moment concerning Goku vs. Saitama is it seems that one shots everyone because it's funny argument people have been running has been severely crippled by the new chapters, with Saitama having an actual serious full power battle against Garo, and not only meeting someone who could reach and understand his level, but having to become stronger to defeat Garo mid fight implying he wasn't strong enough to one-shot him whenever he wanted to at that point of growth. The fight also, while having some comedic moments such as Saitama kicking away hyperspace gates or <laughs> farting back to the battlefield, was overall much more serious in tone, with Saitama being stated by the narrator to actually be so emotional that it's increasing his powers as he fights. Okay. Fun fact about that farting back to the fight moment, by the way, yeah, did you know that a disgusting. long time ago, Murata, the artist of One Punch Man, was actually asked what would have happened if Boros kicked Saitama into space, but he didn't slam into the moon, and it was actually said that Saitama probably would have just farted back to Earth or something, so that scene was actually kind of a pretty funny callback, and very Murata-esque for those that keep up with all the interviews. The only other argument people have now for Saitama being a limitless, omnipotent, non one shot character is that while fighting Garo, Garo states he has limitless power and limitlessly grows stronger. However, this limitless is clearly not some level of omnipotence or above fiction level power, okay. and the limitlessly growing stronger statement we actually see being highly linear and quantifiable when shown on an actual graph. Others have pointed out that some of these lines are actually mistranslated with the Raz more so being Garo just calling Saitama very strong, etc., which probably makes more sense. 
Saitama growing stronger during fights, of course, doesn't mean he can one-shot anybody in fiction either. And even within Dragon Ball, such as Broly, who goes from the likes of base Vegeta to requiring a fusion of both Goku and Vegeta and Super Saiyan Blue to defeat in probably a matter of minutes, even Super Saiyan 1 through 3 is a 400 times difference by itself, with then Super Saiyan mm -hmm. God being able to one-shot Super Saiyan 3, and Blue being over 50 times stronger than Super Saiyan God, due to just literally being Super Saiyan God, Super Saiyan. With their fusion being their power levels quite literally just multiplied together, which exceeded over 3 million even back during the Namek Saga Jesus. in Dragon Ball Z, let alone Super. You can see why Broly's increase is actually pretty insane and a bit more impressive than the likes of Saitama and growing a few times stronger on this graph. Now, you might be thinking that, well, Broly kind of did overpower Goku, so what's the issue? Well, we need to get into how strong Saitama actually is now for me to explain why, and I'm more so just for. getting this he grows stronger for everything out of the way in advance. Last time we went over how strong Saitama was, his main form of grounded scaling based on feats actually performed in the series was centered around Lord Boros. To remind you, Boros was capable of launching Saitama at the moon at the speed of light or faster, and was capable of either A, blasting the surface off the planet using the webcomic statements with his full power, B, capable of destroying the planet using the anime statements or confirmation from the data books and One Punch Man Blu-ray's compass guide, or C, capable of destroying entire stars, as based on or implied by, once again, the compass. Which, while it uses the same word for Boros's power in the Raws as planet or star, Hoshi, it says that Boros in base form can destroy planets as well, so the translator made his limit broken form translate to star as he should probably be stronger or do something different than his base form. With these current chapters of One Punch Man, Boros being able to destroy stars no longer seems like the higher ball interpretation and even when Saitama could one-shot that attack anyway with a serious punch. Cosmic Fear Gara was capable of manifesting Saitama's strength, and thus able to trade serious blows with an arguably bloodlusted Saitama and beyond his normal full he was powers. During these clashes, well, Bang has to get help from interdimensional he fighters to, to transport the results of their clash far into space, or else the Earth would have been it vaporized. This clash is then shown making a massive cluster, or at least millions of stars in the background, seem to vanish, making even the harshest skeptics now on board with Saitama being able to either obliterate many solar systems to possibly multiple galaxies, depending on who you ask. With the added punch of Garo, there are some detractors for this, claiming that he only obliterated the light of the stars, and the stars were shown unharmed in later panels, and blah blah blah, but for this video I don't want to seem like I'm trying to downplay Saitama or try to make it even seem remotely so. For this video we'll be granting him that feat in full, no matter how debatable some may think it is. So not only does Saitama possibly obliterate tons of solar systems or even many galaxies, but he then grows many times stronger after this, meaning not only does he, he really eventually gain the naked. ability to easily do this feat on his own even without Garo, but the ability to do many times more than this on his own. This is very impressive, getting Saitama finally some empirical weight to his abilities outside of speculation that can finally really be compared to other fictional series. Especially since this is confirmed Saitama's maximum, and if anything, beyond his maximum. If you were to throw this Saitama in, say, the Dragon Ball Cell games, he would more than likely easily blow that whole tournament away with ease, well, not accounting maybe for speed, but we'll get into that soon. Cell, a being who could vaporize and blow away solar systems, and made some beings think he was going to destroy, potentially, the whole universe in some translations. Now, while this is probably over time, you would be very surprised at how some people think Cell could actually destroy the universe in one attack, with statements of him having infinite power and so on even being stated. And I think it's pretty safe to say Saitama is stronger than Cell for the most part. From there, even in the next saga, the Buu Saga, we don't really see feats or statements on par with what Saitama did really until the ending of the Fusion Saga, or if you use the anime version of the Buu Saga where we see Majin Buu ripping apart galaxies. And where people debate if Kid Buu could have destroyed the whole universe very quickly, Goku calls it a poof. In the anime canon, which yes, the anime is canon, we see Vegito, the fusion of Goku and Vegeta fighting against Majin Buu with Ultimate Gohan Absorbed, 
And while enraged, Majin Buu Ultimate Gohan absorbed screamed so hard that it sent shockwaves that begun to rip apart the entire living universe. That is crazy. And was going to spread across the whole universe and then crush said universe with alternate dimensions. Yeah, just by yelling really hard. As an example, Super Buu and Gotenks, who are vastly superior to Cell, screaming as hard as they could could only open a small portal between dimensions. And here is Buu on doing that on a scale as large as the entire universe. Oh, and then you can begin to see why Saitama's new feeds start to look a little bit smaller and more questionable. Mm. Buhan even harnesses this universe-destroying power when he calms down later, and Vegito still bullies him with zero difficulty. Then with Battle of God, Super Saiyan God Goku then surpasses even a hypothetical Super Saiyan 3, eight times stronger, time skip Vegito, with him and then a heavily suppressed God of Destruction clashing fist, then going to annihilate not just the universe, but a massive macrocosm stated to be infinite in size multiple times. With the macrocosm consisting of a planet as big as the universe, within a sky so big that heaven vanishes. That's right, the macrocosm of Dragon Ball, at least Universe 7, is so big a possible infinite universe can fit inside of it and be so small compared to the entire thing, it actually vanishes when compared to the full thing. Wow. With Goku and Beerus then clashing fist, just like full power Saitama and Garo, but instead of making some stars disappear, they make every star disappear, all of time-space disappear, mm. and multiple universe-sized bodies disappear, as the entire macrocosm, as stated by the narrator, would become nothing. And this would include infinity as well as it is infinite in size. Considering, of course, we are not just saying limitless or infinite just mean very great, as obviously One Punch Man fans like to interpret infinity and in limitless and those types of terms as true infinity, so we might as well just take Goku's infinity and stretch it to the utmost, right? And of course, all of these things Goku and Beerus does are not at full power. This is all now, common this knowledge, but it Goku's is not really nailed in the people's heads enough, feet, and I don't right? think if they think what Saitama did is even comparable. From here, the next argument is that Saitama can grow stronger, so eventually he'd just reach Goku's level. Not only is this feat already on a level of infinity and beyond on some Buzz Lightyear <laughs> already, but people underestimate how much stronger Goku actually is than this. This is the start of Dragon Ball Super, and exactly. I don't think you can really even fathom the difference between the start and the end of Super in terms of strength. In the anime, Goku absorbs all of those massively beyond universal feats or infinite feats from Super Saiyan God, and he can basically now just do them in his normal state being able to then multiply oh, that crazy. power by over 400 oh, times so with Super crazy, Saiyan 3 bro. using Super Exciting Guide and so on, which is actually a low ball, and then multiply further beyond that by over 50 times with Super Saiyan Blue to over 20,000 times, completely ignoring Super Saiyan God's multiplier, which was shown in Battle of Gods, even low balling and ignoring all the training he goes throughout the whole series and so on. He can then stack Kaioken times 10 on top of that and get over 200,000 times Jesus. stronger. Then in Goku versus Hit 2, he surpasses Kaioken times 10 in his normal blue state, meaning he can grow over 2 million times stronger if you use Kaioken times 10 by that point. Then by the Tournament of Power, he can use Kaioken times 20 and go to 4 million times stronger than Battle of Gods. Oh and then in the Tournament of Power alone, he grows thousands of times, if not hundreds of thousands of times stronger which I prove just in this video here, as well as this possible video as well, if you're interested. Then eventually possibly getting another thousands of times amps with his Mastered Ultra Instinct, which can shake infinity, possibly surpasses fusion, yeah. and so on and so on. I hate to say this, but Saitama would be lucky if his anger amp even let him compare with angry Majin Buu, mm. let alone Ultra Instinct <laughs> Goku from the mm. end of Dragon Ball Super. I sh I People should just really stop don't understand here. the difference, and some will argue that Goku will feel Saitama's power increasing and just let him keep getting stronger and stronger. However, we don't actually know how long Saitama can keep growing. The difference between uh -huh. his growth and other characters' growth is small, and as we see in Dragon Ball Super with Khalifla, Kefla, or Broly, and many others, Goku only lets this go on for so long. Broly's and if we're in character, crazy. Saitama's battle increase is mainly due to his insane emotions over Genos potentially dying. Mm -hmm. Meaning in character, he wouldn't even get this much stronger anyway. So if you're taking Saitama and Goku out of character, 
Saitama would never grow stronger to begin with. On top of the growing stronger argument not working for the most part, and actually just being headcanon, as we don't even know the real increase outside of just a few times from one fight. From here, people will desperately claim that Saitama can interact with hyperspace portals that Garo can create. Hyperspace, which I pointed out on a stream when this chapter first came out, meaning more than one dimension. Now, while Goku actually has many arguments for being higher dimensional already, such as the afterlife of Dragon Ball possibly being higher dimensional or whatever, or even beings from early Z like Garlic Jr. being able to actually make hyperspace portals and interact with it in the dead zone, yeah, it's not needed. As Garo and Saitama agree, they already attack in three dimensions after this, and they are simply making a portal to go places rather than actually kicking around 4D space or something. Of course, 4D could also just mean three spatial dimensions and one temporal dimension, and if you make a portal out of these four dimensions, you can travel through it. Of course, this is what our actual universe would be comprised of, and you could just then simply argue they are simply kicking around the portal that helps lead to that space. Even then, hyperspace is a massive science fiction term that many use in place of just things that are able to travel faster than light, such as how ships in many science fiction shows can leap to hyperspace to travel. The ships doing this doesn't make them higher dimensional, nor was that ever the intent, nor is interacting or generating the ability to travel or connect to hyperspace to make you that strong. Many series use the word hyperspace, including Dragon Ball, and we don't ever scale it like that for many, many reasons. Interacting with dimensional portals themselves is even something Naruto can do, and many other fictions, and we never give them that benefit or that credit for doing things of that caliber. So mm -hmm. in terms of power, no, it's probably not in Saitama's favor. But what about speed? This one is more interesting, as at the end of Saitama vs. Garo, they work together to imagine universes within themselves, and using Garo's unique makeup helps Saitama travel back in time to punch Garo before the fight even began. Of course, traveling back in time itself doesn't really mean anything, but some will claim that Saitama completely sense. breaks the speed formula by doing so, reaching something we call immeasurable speed in the power scaling community, which is a level of speed beyond infinite speed, as speed is measured by speed equals distance divided by time. So if a character can freely move throughout time, then the speed formula wouldn't apply to them and makes them immeasurable. Both Goku and Saitama have arguments for this, with Saitama's being this time travel feat with Garo, and Goku's being fighting hit while he is skipping into the future. Mm -hmm. With Goku, it's not totally implausible, but most don't agree with it, and even if it was accepted, it would be a very low and not completely abusable level of immeasurable speed. Say someone like Superman who could sort of freely just go back in time when zooming around, however even that is argued about. Example being, does making you go at the speed of light warp time and space and let you travel through time, etc, etc, which gives you sort of a mock immeasurable speed. Not saying Superman only does this because of light speed, but these are just examples that people bring up for many other characters. Saitama has a much weaker argument than any of them though, as he is clearly linking and being assisted by a being connected to the flow of the universe itself to jump through time, not just running so fast he so happens to. Mm -hmm. This would be a time travel technique, not a level of speed, and this creates a strange argument. What if Saitama, for whatever reason, decided he couldn't beat Goku in a fight, but absolutely wanted to? Could he simply travel backward in time and maybe just beat up Kid Goku or something? No, because Kid Goku's a gag character, but anyway, no, I'm joking. The only reason this is contentious is because of the way time manipulation and travel work in the Dragon Ball universe. Not only is the Dragon Ball universe potentially beyond infinitely larger than the known One Punch Man universe, but it also has many different rules. With traveling backward in time not affecting characters in the current time, but rather just creating a new timeline with yeah. only select techniques like Whis's ability making exceptions. Even then, many characters seem to have resistance to time, such as when Jiren is stated to be stronger than time against Hit, and Goku seeming to be able to overpower the concept as well even much earlier. Possibly implying that the manipulation of the flow of time won't actually affect these top fighters where they are at maximum capacity, making it even more contentious. If Saitama could even somehow connect and manipulate the Dragon Ball universe, or whatever empty void they are in anyway, as of course Garo was connected with God and the flow of his universe, 
but in the Dragon Ball universe or an empty neutral void, there is no void or Dragon Ball God to help Saitama or Garo understand the flow of the universe, if they even could. All in all, Saitama's current feats are either too weak or still really too debatable to say he'd ever really 100% slam Goku. Mm -hmm. You'd really have to rely on him being a gag character or maybe argue he's beyond a lot of concepts and trying to argue one-shots all of fiction and things like that, really. You can't really rely too much on feats. But I really just want to ask, when you saw Saitama bloodlusted against Garo and going full power, Oh, did I that did. feel like a gag to you? Do you think that was made to make you laugh? <laughs> no. Like, was that comparable to Eddie from Ed, Ed, and Eddie just kind of accidentally grabbing the sun and eating it like a potato chip? Or a Raleigh punching Earth, then breaking it, only for it to come back together like nothing happened in the next frame? Or for her to pop Jupiter like a balloon? And I really got to ask, what's to more say, gag is like? A gag Sneezing character? on Jupiter he, and blowing not its a gases character. around, or literally popping Jupiter like a balloon, which doesn't even make sense. <laughs> is Saitama punching Garo at full power and destroying a lot of stars somehow a really funny gag or comparable to SpongeBob just sort of ripping apart and destroying reality on accident when he pulled on a string for too long? When did SpongeBob do that? Or how about... When Kid Goku shattered Goku the frame. literal manga's paneling with Yamcha's face. Or what about when Peter Griffin put two metal detectors together and time traveled to when the universe didn't even exist? Was Garo and Saitama's time travel combo funnier or a bigger gag than Peter Griffin doing that? Mm. Probably not. Well, at least not in the funny department for normal reasons. But One Punch Man is a funny series in a serious world, just as one intended, and I stand by that even today. Mm, funny, I say at the serious, moment that uh, the current funny... argument is if Saitama could be Dragon Ball Z even today in a serious world. But One Punch Man is a funny series, a funny series in a serious, in a serious, world, serious world, just as one intended, and I stand by that even today. I say at the moment that the current argument is if Saitama can be Dragon Ball Z, such as the Boo Saga. I also think other debates that are really interesting is Saitama versus One Piece, Bleach, Naruto, and all of those. I'm curious what you guys think. Do you think he just stomps all of those more newer Shonen series? But unfortunately, he's not quite at the absurd level or the higher level of Dragon Ball Super I knew that we would agree. of strength Seth. quite yet. I knew we would. But maybe in that final God encounter, he'll reach it or even surpass it. Now, please stop making posts saying I'm ignoring the topic and get off my f nuts. Go off your nuts, Seth, man. No, bro. I knew that we would agree, Seth, the programmer, you feel me? But, bro, freaking, bro. So Saitama's feats scale up to Majin Buu arc Dragon Ball Z from Seth the, the programmer. You feel me? Hey man, that sucks a lot of you. The Saitama fans who, who really thought of canon and Dragon Ball, it is never defined as anything specific. It's usually good. I'm not really on that game, I'm not gonna lie to you. Yeah, people also seem to fear that DB characters, especially the Saiyans, have tr tremendous invisible gains like you. Uh, your example in the top where they go significantly, significantly stronger in base which translates into their own forms Nasty can't destroy the speed in time with a much simpler argument than the one you made the top fighter job problem when we went faster than time a long time ago dang man which i knew goku was beating saitama literally and seth didn't even talk about nothing that happened in the dragon ball super manga he he was strictly going off of the anime, right? Yeah, there's not there's not a single Dragon Ball Z panel in here. Well, Dragon Ball Super uh, freaking manga thing in here, bruh. Which is, you feel me? Kind of crazy, man. He was only talking about the anime versions for Dragon Ball Z, and he used the manga for it. That's Hammer, bro. So, you feel me? It is, hey, it is what it is. I knew that Goku would win, though. But, you feel me? If you guys enjoyed this video, uh, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Uh, I'm leaving you a link down below. You feel me? Uh, let me know if you guys agree with Seth or disagree. And, uh, 
and why, you feel me? And yeah, uh, make sure you, you, guys, you guys have a blessed day and peace.